Okay, um, so today I'm going to go over uh, option strategies. Um, so we, we talked about options uh, the last time, the structure of the markets and, and the options themselves. Uh, so this time uh, we're going to talk about how we how we use those. So um, things we're going to talk about um, uh, when we first talked about options, I mentioned that you know you can have the underlying stock and have an option written against that. That's a, a covered option. So we, we won't cover that, but you could actually um, combine bonds with options and, and come up with what we call a principal protection note. And I'll, I'll go over that. Uh, and the stock plus option we, we've talked about um, as well, just when we talked about the, the structure of, of the option. But um, we can also combine uh, two options of the same type. So like two calls or two puts, that's what we call a spread. Uh, and then we could combine options of different types. So we can have a call and a put. Um, and, and so that would be a combination. So we're gonna talk about um, spreads and combinations um, here. Uh, but first the principal protected note, um, this is a way for you to invest um, without losing uh, your money, right? And so uh, what you would do is purchase a bond. Um, like in this example, this is a $1,000 bond. So like a regular bond, uh, zero coupon bond um, of $1,000, right? So it's a, a three-year bond uh, of $1,000. And then you could at the same time buy a three-year call option on some stock portfolio <laughs> excuse me, that's currently worth $1,000. So instead of putting $1,000 into this portfolio, you have the option to buy that portfolio um, in the future uh, for, for $1,000, right? At the end of this three years. Um, and instead you put it in the bond. If the market does well, uh, then you can exercise your option and, uh, and take that difference. Um, and if the stock market were to do poorly, that option would expire worthless, but you still have your bond, right? And so um, there are gonna be costs associated with it, um, but it's not gonna be uh, a large percentage of the principles, right? So this would just be a way for you to, to make that type of investment um, and, and reduce your, your downside. So um, whether or not you can do it, um, you know, the level of dividends, interest rates, the volatility of the portfolio. Um, these are things, uh, you know, we've already talked about dividends. Uh, you know, it kind of complicates things uh, when, you, when you have those periodic cash flows in between that would need to be reinvested. Um, and the, there's, there's different things that you can do, uh, things like out of the money strike prices. So you can try to, you know, build in some sort of gain or maybe, you um, uh, you, to, to minimize or to, you know, you'll give up some um, to, to give you more protection, that, that type of thing. So there's um, changes that you can do on this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I wanted to make sure we get a, a chance for you to, to understand what's going on with these um, spreads. So I want to kind of touch back on um, these payout structures, because this is how uh, everything will be pre presented. So um, the y-axis um, is profit, right? So we start with zero profit um, and then it can go up, right? We're making more money. So this is where we would be happiest, right? And then if it goes down, we're losing money, right? In these uh, dashed lines, you're seeing the payout. So this would be the payout of the stock if we were to have purchased it here, right? If the stock price, S sub T, right? Were to go down, right? Then we're losing money on that. If the strike price goes up, we're gaining money, right? Um, and then this is our option uh, payout structure here, right? And so this right here, if you think of the slope of this as being zero all the way to K, right? And then the slope of this is one, right? Then this line here, right? It's, I'm just adding this number to this dotted line. Right, because this is a, just a single number, it's a straight line, right? And so all of this will shift up by that amount. And then once it gets up here, you notice this is decreasing dollar for dollar, while this is increasing dollar for dollar. And that's what causes this line to flatten out once we reach our strike price. 
Okay. And then same thing here, you know, this, this is like I sold, right? So I make money here. And then what did I, I sell? Well, I, I must have sold a, um, a call. So someone, I wrote the call, right? And so someone's going to exercise that call if the stock price gets above the strike price. And so that's why I'm, I'm losing there. Right, and then down here, you know, this is negative to start with. So this is where I had bought, right? So you, you understand like if it's, if it's above, um, it's because you, you, you wrote it. And then if it's below, it's, it's because you bought it, right? Because you start off negative or positive, right? Depending on that. Um, but as you can see by, by combining this underlying stock, right, uh, or shorting, Right, if you're if you're um, you know the stock, um, then you then you can combine that stock with this option, right? Um, and then that gives you these different payout structures. So that's that's to um, to show show you that piece. So when we're going through these um, the the spreads and and things like that, just understand that this is what we're using to to come up with those payoff structures. Okay, so first, um, a, this is a bull spread. And remember, bull means uh, you're, you're wanting the stock market to grow, right? You're, you're wanting to, or you're expecting to see improvements and, and that type of thing. So the positive portion here, the profitability portion is the high st stock prices, right? Uh, and you're going to lose money on the low stock price. But see here, uh, these are calls. Right. And so I'll purchase a call with a strike price of K1. So it's I just lose money until K1 and then it goes up dollar for dollar. Right. And then I'm going to sell one. Right. So I get some money. Right. But it's at K2. Right. And now K2 is a higher price than K1. So, of course, this right here is a lot smaller than this down here. OK. And so initially, you know, I'm going to have negative right? Profit. I lost money because I have to pay for this. And, and buying the first one is not offset by selling the second one, right? But once I reach K1, my first one would, ex I could exercise it, right? And so as the stock price goes up, my profit goes right up along with it, right? And then finally, I'm making, making money, right? It's positive. But once I reach K2, someone else then would have theirs being exercised, Right, just like how mine suddenly turned up, somebody else has had their turn up, meaning mine then got turned down. Right, and so these are flat. So I add these numbers together, and I get this. Once I hit K one, I get this dollar for dollar increase. It is uh, this line here shifted up again, that same amount. Right, you got this little corridor going. Right, and then once I reach K two. This is going up dollar for dollar. This is dropping dollar for dollar. So again, I get a straight line, right? And so this looks a little bit different um, than, than what we were seeing before, but what we've done is we've minimized our losses, right? To some set figure, but we know we've maximized our potential profit, right? And you would do this because you think, hey, the stock market is probably going to go up. Okay, so this is using calls. You can do the same thing using puts, right? And so I'm going to buy a K1 put. I would sell um, the K2. And then because of this combination, I get that same payout structure where I've capped my losses, right? This is the worst I will ever do, but I've also capped uh, my gains. Right. But the higher numbers are where the positive is. That's what makes this a bull spread. Right. So you can do a bull spread using calls. You can do a bull spread using puts. If we do a bear spread, here's a bear spread using puts. That's kind of like the way we normally think of this. And we are selling um, uh, the strike price at K1. We're going to buy the strike price at K2. Right, and then we combine those and it looks similar. See, this is the, the bull spread, right? It's just flipped around. So our profit uh, is on the low strike prices uh, and then our gains would be if the stock price were to go up. So we think that the market's gonna do poorly, 
right? That's why we're wanting to invest this way. And that's what makes it a bear spread. This is using puts uh, and this is using calls, right? And so this is a way for us to, um, you know, get the payout structure we want using the options uh, that are available to us, right? So using two calls or two puts, well, we can build this kind of spread. Okay. Um, now, what if you put those together, right? So if you had a bull call and a bear put, like we were just, um, you know, went over how to do that. Um, well, uh, I'll show you what this payoff structure looks like, but if you just think about it in your head, we saw two different payoff structures and you know one of them pays off really well in, in the down and it, it, you lose money in the up and you pay off in the up and losing the down in the other one. So if we combine those, our payout structure is gonna look something like this. And so um, they're gonna be short a put and long a put and then short a call and long a call, right? So uh, if you look at each of these, right? They're gonna, you know, you see this overlap here, right? And then you see these payoff structures. This is the long put and this is the long call here, right? But when you add all of these up, you end up, you know, with this, this net position, right? And so this would be a way for you to also go in um, and, and be able to, to lock in a particular um, profitability. Um, it's, it's like a, basically a, a spread for arbitrage. Um, you know, cause you're seeing, you're seeing something going on there, right? And so you can, you can lock in that. Um, so it's, it's dangerous, I guess, to, to think about jumping into something like this because for us, this, this really only works with um, the, the bull um, or, or with, with uh, European options right because they can't be exercised early um if you if you try to do this uh you could you could lose money i guess is what i'm trying to say i, I know it looks like hey i've guaranteed this but this is like if you're if you're looking at european though um because when you start looking at um you know american options you can you can't be put in a situation where you're going to lose money right um now here's um a, a slightly different um, type of spread because you know we we did um, you know like that um, the 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 bear and the the bull. Uh, this is another animal, the butterfly, right? And if you think of this uh, as the butterfly's body, right? And then these are the wings, right? Um, and so what's going on is you're buying two different calls right you're buying one with a with uh, an exercise at k1 and you're buying one with an exercise at k3 right and then you're going to sell two of them that exercise at k2 right so you have one with this one and then you have one with this one right so it's almost like you're doing a um a bear bull sort of um but uh but you're you're combining those together and since you have two if you notice here the slope of this line is twice as steep as the slope of this line because you have two different options that are being exercised right so if it goes up one dollar this is dropping by two right because there's two different uh, payouts that you have to make up for right and so when you when you add these up you know these are all constants right and so it's just a flat line to k1 then i make money all the way to k2 i lose money all the way to k3 and then it's flat right so i've locked in my my biggest loss is going to be at either extreme right so this is like i'm i'm expecting the volatility um you know would be would be lower and so we're going to stay somewhere in this range because that's where i make most of my money right um, but this is, you know, doing this using calls, you can actually do the same thing using puts, right? And so you see here, I'm going to 
um, buy a, a K1 put, uh, buy a put for, for K3, and then sell to at K2, right? And so then this one is dropping by two, and each of these are going up by one, so those cancel out to zero to, you know, once I get to K1. Um, then this is flat, but this one is going up, and this one's going down at two, right? Or go, yeah, so this, no, this is going up at two as, I, as I'm going this way, right? And this is going down at one. So this is going up at one all the way to K2. So we end up, whether we're using these calls or using these puts, we're getting the same uh, payout structure, right? Um, the, the last um, spread um, they're gonna talk about is, is the calendar spread. And if you see here, you see sort of like this curved line and, and you may say, wow, what, what's going on here? Um, what you're doing with a, with a calendar spread is you have the same strike price, um, but they're gonna be on different dates, right? And so this would be a way, um, you know, if you like, you, this would be two calls here because this, this is using calls. Um, and so the the short you're you're, you're capturing the, this difference in pricing because of the, the maturity, um, and so um, here's the same thing um, using using puts. Um, so so you know if you if you notice you know you're getting these these curves and that's because of the the way this payoff. Um, works as you get closer to expiration. We, we haven't really gotten into um, a lot of the calculus behind the pricing, but, but just understand that uh, what, what you're trying to do is, um, you know, take advantage of this difference in pricing across, um, across maturities, right? Um, so, so those are oh the spreads, right? Remember the spread, we're gonna use two calls or, or two, two or more calls, two or more, more puts, because uh, we have the butterflies and things in there as well. So, so spreads are when you're using the, the same. Um, if you're going to use calls and puts on the same stock, uh, then we call those combinations, okay? And so the first combination um, is the straddle. And so this looks similar to what we saw with the, the butterfly, but it doesn't flatten out the wings, right? Um, and so the, the straddle, um, instead what you're doing is you're looking at, you know, I'm going to buy, you know, at a strike price of K and I'm going to buy at a strike price of K, both a call and a put. Right, and then if it stays right around K, I don't make any money, right? Just like with the butterfly spread, I, I didn't make money there. But if it moves far away, the way this one's structured, then you know that's that's where the the profit would be made. Now you can you can reverse this position so that it would look like that butterfly, but uh, the butterfly, you, or if you remember, it had the wings that flattened out. This does not, right? So with a straddle, it's just an option uh, or a call and a put at the same time. Um, if you want to uh, take advantage of some of these uh, changes in angles, like you see here with the strip and the strap, um, a strip is like you're going to go long in one call and two puts, right? And so you see here, this is steeper than that one, you know? Uh, a strap, you're gonna go long on two calls, right, and short, or go, go long on two calls and long on one put, right? So again, this is a way, um, if you're thinking it's more likely to go in one direction uh, or another, right, then, then you, can, um, you can do that. And, and so all of these are using the exact same strike price. Uh, if we wanna make this um, a little more fancy, we can make a, a strangle, show you what that looks like here. Um, and you see here, so they're going to buy a call with a strike price of K2, and they're going to buy a put uh, with a strike price of K1, right? And so you can see here, you know, where it's got this, this large flat 
bottom and then it goes up on either side. Um, if you use this same technique of the different uh, strike prices and do that with a butterfly, you actually make something that we call a condor uh, where it's got a wider body, but it has those wings. So just remember with like this, the, the strip, strap, strangle, um, the, these types of things, what we're doing um, is, is buying a combination of, of, of calls and uh, inputs, right? So um, just a, a couple of other things. Um, so uh, notice where the strike prices are close together, a butterfly spread provides a payoff consisting of this like spike right so imagine how if the if we try to get the wings up as close to zero as possible right um and then you can make little um like bullets across the different strike prices you know uh to to build out um you know a, a payoff like that right so when we're using options in this way either we have some sort of risk exposure um, you know, that we're specifically trying to avoid or with some of these now that you're seeing where we can use options to build um, investment payoffs based on where we think the strike price will be, right? Without taking a position just in the stock, but, but using options to, uh, to, to leverage our position to, to maximize um, our returns, so. Uh, if you do have any questions on this, please don't hesitate to uh, email me and, and let me know. Um, and I will just um, look forward to talking to you next time.